Hello and welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live. Coming up, we're going to do something a bit different with a demo palooza of Office 365. And in the next 15 minutes, we're going to challenge ourselves to bring you a demo pack tour of the latest updates to Office that bring intelligent and cloud connected capabilities to your favorite Office apps. And to do that, I'm joined by Jack Gelmore from the Office Demos team. Welcome. All right, Jeremy. Very good. If I could speak properly, right. I'd be even better. <laughs> All right. So All right. we've got 15 minutes effectively to highlight all the cool stuff in Office. And what basically we're going to do is we're going to pull up a clock because we want to make sure that we can time it. How many people think that we can get through five really good demos? How many people think we can do better than five? All right, how about seven? I think we're going to go for, we're going to go for 10. Let's go for 10 demos. It's quantity, not quality, right? 10 good ones. Okay. They've got to be good ones, yeah, not, little, not little ones like spell check or something, but really good ones. Less than a minute. All right, so let's, let's dig into it. We're going to bring up the clock. We've got the clock visible now. I think you can see the 15 there. Yeah. So Jack, you've got 15 minutes and your time starts now. All right, so we're going to start at the new office.com. It's the place where you should start your day with Office, and it's your gateway to all of the different Office applications. We've got a list at the top of the apps that you use most. We've got search across documents, people, and sites. So here you can invoke your apps, see your recent documents, even recent sites that you visited. This is designed to be a very quick place for you to get logged in and get where you were, uh, back on track, focused on your content, your OneDrive, and all of your uh, favorite sites. Yep. Now. We are going to start by showing off some intelligence features. I'm going to start in PowerPoint. Now, Jeremy, did you know that we release new capabilities in the Office 365 suite every month? I actually do know that. How did you stay on top of it all? I film things. OK. <laughs> well, you've all seen the demo, I suppose, of real time subtitles and speaking into the microphone and translation into other languages. And that's a great demo. Uh, I'm not going to do it today because it's already been done by somebody more senior than me. So I take the leftovers. I'm going to translate these slides from French to English. So I'm going to use text content slide translation. I'm going to save a copy of the PowerPoint. And in just a matter of seconds, we're going to be drum going to roll, be translating please. Translating this French document into English. That's right. This is about building on the work of others, stealing other people's ideas, and making them your own. And the Canadians are going to be really happy with this one. Correct. So here you go. On slide three, if you look on the left, there's the original French. On the right, there's the English translation. So not only do we have real time, all right, cool. People are all down right. with that, Jeremy. That's all the francophones out there should be clapping. Yeah. All right, you got you got more time. You got 13 minutes left. When I talk about unleashing my creativity, I'm talking about slides like this. This is pretty sweet, right? Any of you create slides like this? You've, you've unleashed nothing. I there. did not major in art. <laughs> it's not a key talent of mine. I'm going to insert some pictures. And now people that are loyal followers of your show, Jeremy, are going to be like, oh, yeah, he's doing that again. I think I saw that a year ago. Hold on. We're going to drop some better, pictures in yes. there. Yeah. And we're going to come up with a number of designs for those slides. That's cloud powered. And by the way, the engine gets better over time. So a year ago, when probably David Alexander stood up here and showed you that, uh, you saw something similar to that. Now, it gets even better than next... that, though, because we've seen that one. Well, check this one out. So All you right. got a barista here on the right. It's a very long photo. Salient region detection, cognitive services, mm. knows what your eyes drawn to, crops the photo intelligently. How about that? Nice. Right. But this is what you have not seen. The moment you've been waiting Are for. Are you ready? New capabilities. Here are a series of dates inconsistently formatted. Anyone craving a beautiful timeline, <laughs> right? Yes. And lastly, a slide that's got a series of call to action steps that each start with a verb can create a beautiful layout like this, right? And then, of course, these are just smart art, so you can play around with them to suit your liking, right? Do whatever you want, turn them into 3D, change the colors. So this is about helping you to stay focused on your content, create professional results All right. with a minimum of friction. What do you guys think of this? All right. Nice. You don't have to spend all the time formatting those slides. All right, you've got, you've got about 12 minutes left. Keep going. This is going to be so easy, man. <laughs> like, seriously, you should have come up with a bigger number than that. Okay. All right, let's talk about inking, because the pen is pretty amazing uh, on the Surface Pro that I'm using here. Yep. Now, this A-frame sketch was created using ink annotations in PowerPoint, right? So you can, you can draw lines. Of course, you grab a pen, and then you draw your, oh, but you know, Obviously, they whoa. were using the ruler feature in PowerPoint. Yeah, I'm not really very good at that. So <laughs> what I want to do is I want to bring up a ruler here that I can position exactly at the angle I want. And that way, when I uh, use my pen to draw, I get a perfectly 
straight line. See that? So for those of us with shaky hands or doing demos on stage, the ruler will totally help you. And he was However, shaking his head on purpose up here because he's got, trying to get through 10 demos in less than 15 minutes. The stress you is killing me. <laughs> Keep going. The stress is killing me. One thing a lot of people don't know about ink is that we actually not only pay attention to pressure and of course all of the things you would expect from the demo here, but we also pay attention to the sequence of the ink and we can replay it back, which is really important when you're looking at how something was marked up. There's a lot of times you can infer intent based on the sequence of the strokes of the ink. And in fact, actually when we do uh, ink to text, it's very important to know which way you drew a letter. You don't just look at a picture of the letter. You know it's, the stroke started here and it went that way and there, therefore it's an E. So this is ink playback and you can use yep. this, for example, to do Chinese character annotation to see how those strokes were done in the right order, mathematical equations, etc. Jeremy, it's crazy it what is. you can do with ink, all right? But you can do better than that and you've got 10 minutes. I know. Oh, this I'm one's so good. Not I think stressed. this one's going to be cool. I can All feel right. it. We're in, we're in like the home of NASA or one of them. 3D imagery. 3D should not be reserved for $10,000 plus devices. We believe 3D can be democratized, available for everybody on a Microsoft 365 device. So we've got great tools like Paint 3D, Remix 3D, which is a great way to online share 3D models. And we also support it across the Office applications. If you want to rotate a 3D model in Excel, you can totally do it. If you have a great reason to do that, please let me know. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this in PowerPoint. So I'm gonna take this model and you can see I can just rotate it around there and view it from a lot of different angles. But what's interesting is somebody like me that's kind of simple, I'm just gonna copy this slide. Okay, so this is I'm just gonna make an exact duplicate of the slide. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do, Jeremy, is I'm gonna take a look at a different perspective. All right, I'm gonna look at the bottom of this Hubble telescope. There we go. Yep. And then under my transition, now you'll see the transitions fade, push, wipe, split, reveal. So 2015. So we look at morph. Morph is a new transition that automatically calculates the delta between the slides and provides a cinematic movie-like effect. It's basically going to kind of interpolate all of the different changes of that 3D model. That's correct, Jeremy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the show from the beginning. There we go. Are you ready for the Hubble telescope? Let's see. Okay, there we go. There's rotation number one. Learn about the solar panels, communication antenna. And that's your custom one. And there's the custom one. Backwards so copy, paste, morph. You're in the 3D business. And the backwards, backwards or forwards work. So all of that is interpolated between any of the slide moves. You got eight minutes though. You did one of the demos. That counts. So okay. Up the tick. Okay. So up what's what's tick. new? I want to see right. something in Word. One more thing for the pen. All right. Okay. Like a very good school teacher, we can all grab the red pen and say, bad, right? But you could do that for a while. Yeah, that's not new, right? Oh, you want to replay that? Oh yeah, there you go. We'll see how bad it was. Just just to make it even worse when your teacher gives you a bad annotation. Totally. Okay. Totally. But we can also use ink to edit a document. So I'm going to activate something here called the ink editor. And with the ink editor, I can do something a little different with the ink, which is I can just scratch through this paragraph like that and you'll see it automatically deletes the items that I scratch through and reflows the document. Or maybe I want to just scratch through a portion of this sentence uh, and you'll see it automatically reflows the document. So the pen is quite useful beyond, oh, how about we just select this paragraph and then we'll highlight it with the yellow text. So we can use it as a selection tool as well. So great innovations on the pen side. If you want to impress your friends at the next cocktail party, trust me, I've tried this, it doesn't work. You can tell he goes to a lot of cocktail yeah. parties. Any of you that are Excel junkies, you know the RAND function, random numbers, right? Uh, in the demo world, we use this a lot. It has very limited practical applicability, except uh, in college when the teacher doesn't actually read your paper. But if you put a number in the middle and you hit enter, you get that many number of random paragraphs. So if you're just looking to pad your, yeah, yeah. totally, right? <laughs> Super useful. Yes. Let me tell you what the ROI is on that one. Yes, and if you're in IT, this is even better. If you use desktops and this, then it looks like you're busy all the time. Totally. <laughs> it is all about looking busy. Yes. All right. All what right. else you got? Now, I'm going to take us into the Word web app. Uh, the same thing I'm going to show you here is available in Word, and it's also available in OneNote, and it's embedded in the Outlook web app. It's a super important tool we're using to improve accessibility. I'm going to bring up a document here in the Word web app. This is a document that has multiple languages in it. And what I'm going to do is bring up something here called the Immersive Reader. 
Now this originally came as a uh, hackathon project actually from within Microsoft. A group of people got together across the... And then it came into OneNote. And then it came into it. OneNote first and then it's kind of grown from there. Now it's everywhere. Originally it was designed for students, especially those with additional needs for learning. So here I can highlight syllables or I might say I want to highlight, just change the color of what the nouns are. Or for some with additional vision support that's needed, we can change you know, the background color. So of course, making it possible for everyone to be able to consume your content. Yep. There is another interesting use case though, and that is in proofing your own stuff. Have you ever noticed when you read your own stuff for proofing, you still miss a lot? But if you engage an additional sense with hearing, you can improve your proofing substantially. Take a look at this. While traveling in Costa Rica, you will have the peace of mind of knowing our support staff is a local phone call away. A vaincre sans péril, on triomphe sans gloire. No dejes para mañana lo que puedas hacer hoy. Anzuru yori umu ga yasashi. Ahadiru nesu jawaban min lam yirda. How about that, right to left? What do you think? Yeah. An excellent enunciation. Doesn't sound like an American trying to speak all these languages, which is really cool. Totally. All right. So look for, you know, amazing support coming in. It's this language stuff just gets better and better and better as uh, the cloud services are used and refined and they learn over time. All right. All right. Got, moving into Excel. Four minutes and 45 seconds. What else are you What's do? our count up to, Jeremy? I don't know. Are we, I, I are we good? Count. Does anybody keep right. count? Stocks. Seven. Okay, we're Excel, seven. numbers, text, calculations on numbers and text for 30 years, right? Oh, and pivot tables. Don't forget the pivot tables. With cloud connected Excel, we start to infer data type definitions. Microsoft, Intel, human beings know those are companies. How about we add Snap? And the minute we do, we get this little thing that says, hey, I think that's a stock. I'm going to click on that. Now I've turned it into an intelligent entity. See the, the little icons to the left there. How about we add in Starbucks? Now, what does is, what is being an entity do for us? Well, it puts a bunch of properties behind the object. So here I can see, hey, we know a certain amount about Snap. Uh, this you know, has stocks going down, it looks like. Stock, well, <laughs> see, how are we doing today, Jeremy? All right. Oh, hey, all right. Now, what can I do then with that? I can start to fill out things like, hey, what's the ticker for this stock symbol? Or I can say, gee, what other properties do you know about? Maybe the open or the close or the high or the low, etc. Very cool. All right. Cities. Same idea here. Orlando. Oh, I think that's a city. How about my hometown of Portland, Oregon? We'll pop that one in there. We got any Portlanders here? There we go. Righto. Portlandia on stage. There we go. There you go. And in the same vein here, we can start to say, hey, when was it incorporated? And what's the population? So. Think about the possibilities here in terms of harnessing curated trusted data from the cloud to come in and bring intelligence, reduce errors, improve the quality of your analyses. All using search, awesome. That's coming later this year. So I want to be clear, everything I've shown you, if you're an Office Insider, you've got now. Uh, that was the Excel capability is, is coming soon, as is this one. Here's a bunch of data and a table. Now, with insights, much like PowerPoint Designer, I can use the cloud to give me insightful analysis of this content. So in the beginning, you go, hey, I can make you a chart of sum of units by years. And you're like, wow, that's impressive. I think I could have highlighted that, hit recommended charts and come up with that one. But as we keep going down, you'll start oh, to see better. smarter and smarter insights. Hey, Litware accounts for the majority of the sum of the units. So what you've got here is not a replacement for a data analyst, right? So don't anybody get worried about their jobs because uh, there's a lot more data analysts need to do than this, but think about just the ideas and the conjectures and the hypotheses that elements like this can bring to you. So, okay, India has more sales than, I'm gonna insert the chart, creates a new chart, creates the pivot table behind it, and then you can do ad hoc analysis from there. So we're really excited about the work that Excel is doing to uh, bring bring to life uh, the data that you have stored in spreadsheets All right, on our backend system. Two minute warning. We're two at minute nine, warning. it sounds like. All right, fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Not, not. You know what? I forgot on my way here. I forgot to expense this um, parking. Any okay. of you have trouble with receipts? Let's go to the phone if we will. I'm going to take my little parking uh, receipt here and I'm going to bring up the office lens. Now, this thing is awesome for whiteboards too. If you're at the end of a meeting, you're standing off to the side and you snap one of those nasty uh, curved pictures of a whiteboard, it'll straighten it for you. So you've got a whiteboard mode there or a document mode. I'm going to go ahead and hit take a picture there and you'll see it automatically straightens the Receipt. From there, then I can say I'm done. I want to deposit that in OneNote. I'm going to hit save. And right now I'm transferring that file right into OneNote. I can toss this in the trash, except I'll use it for my next demo. 
Very cool. Okay. All right, all nice. right, keep going. Let's go back to the PC. More OneNote. In just a second, we'll have a sync come down. There's, there oh, it is. look at that. There's the receipt I just took a picture that of. That is the power Believe of the Believe me, cloud. 927, 1251, there you go. Perfect, all right. All right. No fake demos here, man. No. We are serious. No PowerPoints, it's, it's good to go. High risk, baby. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this uh, little triangle here. First, I'm gonna get rid of the triangle. We don't need that. I'm gonna circle this mathematical equation. All right. I'm gonna bring up math here. And math is gonna say, hey, I think I know this is an equation, right? And if I do ink to math, it'll just turn it into text. But I can say, hey, I wanna solve for X and it'll do your homework for you, right? It'll say, hey, I wanna do this, uh, you know, using the quadratic formula. And it'll be like, hey dude, here's how you do all this. Uh, don't tell your teacher you got it from one. Oh, no. whoa, how about we I grab it? I wasn't expecting that, but it on got, the page. He got through it. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Okay, so that, that took us through more than 10 demos in 15 minutes. What do you guys think? Was that good? All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of new capabilities. These are things that we can use both as users, as IT. All these things, where do, we, where do we stay on top of all these different changes that are coming to Office? So the great news is we communicate it all through the Office 365 portal. Right. Logs.office.com is a great place to go. Uh, if you're interested in the roadmap, uh, we've got a roadmap.office.com that'll kind of show you by product, by feature, next 30 days, beyond 30 days. Uh, we published that in a pretty transparent uh, format. Very cool. Yeah. All right, let's end it with that. So you thank it. you, Jack, the great set of demos, and thank you all for watching. Of course, we're gonna demonstrate all the great stuff across IT, end user, Office, Windows, everything else on the next, in the next series of Microsoft Mechanic shows. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now. Cheers.